Hey everyone, how's it going? My name's Mayuko and welcome back to my channel where we talk about tech, career, and life. All right, everybody, today we're gonna talk about whether you should negotiate your salary. So I know that I haven't really talked about salary or like money, compensation things really at all on this channel, but recently I met someone who is an expert in this. I met my friend Sarah, who is the lead negotiator at Levels.FYI. She's also a former tech recruiter at Amazon, Facebook, and Google, so she knows like salary negotiation stuff really, really well. I had an incredibly enlightening chat with her, and so I brought her onto my show, Muko's Corner, to share her advice. So today in this video, I'm gonna share what she said about whether you should negotiate your salary, whether you're coming in as an intern to a company, you're an early career software for engineer or your mid-career. So let's dive in. So let's get the elephant out of the room because we're here to talk about negotiation specifically. Like once you get an offer from them, they give you the first packet and you see your first number and all of your RSUs and all of that kind of stuff. Um, I think the biggest burning question that everybody has is, should you negotiate your salary? A hundred percent, yes. So a lot of companies, they have uh, recently we restructure their compensation or even the negotiation process. So typically there's always a range for compensation. Um, and typically within that range, they break it up into like three tier. Um, so minimum, mid, and then max. Um, for a lot of the time too, for a recruiter, because the range is so large from like the minimum to like the max uh, number, typically the range can be anywhere from you know, 20K difference all the way to like 100 to 200K difference. And this is why a lot of the times too, the recruiter will try to ask you like, hey, what are you looking for in terms of compensation? So they can gauge like where can they land you within that range. And if, uh, and typically too, even when you share a number, they typically will still try to kind of start you out either at like a minimum number or in between the minimum and the mid number. Nobody will ever like automatically give you the max number a it's just my company's policy too but we have to start everyone out with the same number and we would wait for you to ask i'm not happy with this number can we do something about this that's pretty much applied for you know any company that's more mature like there's d funding or higher as well as buying the public companies now sometimes for startup companies um the range tend to be a little bit smaller uh, but in terms of base salary, you're going to see a, that number pretty consistent, even for smaller company versus like young companies. And so I guess like now let's break it down into parts of your career. So there's, I think, kind of three very distinct periods of your career. One in which you're trying to get an internship as um, a college student or um, otherwise you're kind of trying to get your foot into the door into the tech industry. And then the other step is kind of like your first role in tech. Um, even within that, there's like college recruiting. So you're going to directly from university into uh, the tech industry or those who come from boot camps and other backgrounds and get their first job. And then there's also the mid-career um, folks who are also getting offers for salaries as well. So I guess, how would you navigate all of those three different um, parts of your career in negotiating your salary? Yeah, so good questions. Um, so for intern, it is a little bit trickier to negotiate because campus recruiting is very much so different than industry recruiting. And for campus recruiting, typically for an intern, you're gonna get paid hourly and um, it's not as flexible in terms of negotiating there. So let's say for example, if they start you out with $80 an hour, you can push for a little bit higher at $85 an hour, but the range wouldn't be like, 100k to 200k or anything like that um for a few companies um they will actually offer equity to the intern as well so the equity component is something that's more flexible but for companies that don't offer equity for internship it's harder to to push the the salary compensation there um however if you get a returning offer for your next internship with the same company because you already have, you know, the relationship with your manager, the team already know you, there is a track of record about your performance, that would be the best um, time for you to renegotiate your hourly rate when you return to that internship. Now for new grad, new grad is a little bit different. So for new grad, we treat them as an industry um, recruiting track too. So we pay them just like similar to any full-time position where the package would be, um, you know, they, we would have base, 
equity, sign-on bonus, and performance bonus. Um, so the first offer tend to be a little bit tricky, and I feel like a lot of the new grad tend to get really nervous around negotiating because they feel like, man, if I ask for more money, a I might, you know, I'm scared that if I don't perform at this level, they might, you know, I might get fired or or if I negotiate for too much, I might lose this offer. Um, I'll tell you right now, you're not going to lose your offer because you negotiate. Um, so typically, like I said, the recruiter always lands you in like the minimum between like either the minimum number or in between the minimum and the mid number. There's still always room to go. So if you push back a little bit more, giving them the reason why. So that's another thing that I want to mention here too, is as a recruiter, sometimes certain things are out of my control. I'm the middleman. <laughs> um, there's a protocol that I have to follow and I can't just give you a number just because you asked for it. Like I need some information or reasons behind it. So if you have any competing offers, you don't have to share the details of the competing offers, but just knowing that they are there would help the case. And then um, why? what are your concerns about this salary number? For example, if base is too low or because you're moving and you need additional like sign-on bonus to help with the move, for example. So not only that you need to ask for a number or know the number that you need to ask for, but also be prepared to provide some reasons as well. Same with mid-level. Um, someone who, you know, maybe going from the junior level to a mid-level position the negotiation process is going to be pretty similar, except for new grad, the range tend to be a little bit narrower. And for folks that are mid-level, the range tend, tend to be a little bit larger. Um, so just to demonstrate a little bit more, uh, for example, the minimum for a new grad to the maximum number would be like 50K difference. And for folks that are mid-level, it would be anywhere from 20K upward to 80k and 100k difference from like the minimum to the max number there. All right, everybody, thank you all so much for watching the video. I hope you liked it. Sarah shared like so many incredible insights about salary and negotiation. So if you'd like to watch the video recording of that episode of Minko's Corner, then you can become a member today on YouTube to get full access. You'll also be able to listen to the audio recording of the show through the podcast version of Mugo's Corner. I also wanted to take a moment to thank the sponsor of today's video, Brilliant. So I think an important part about negotiating your salary as a software engineer is to really kind of continue to build on your existing skills in computer science and STEM to provide more value to a company. And if y'all have programmed before, you know that practicing problems is a much more effective way to learn than watching lectures, which is why I I love Brilliant. Brilliant is a problem solving based website and app with a hands on approach with over 60 interactive courses in math, science, and computer science. They all have an element of storytelling, code writing, interactive challenges, and problem solving as part of their courses. You can use Brilliant to get into the habit of learning new things every day. Like maybe you wanna do a Pomodoro timer of one Brilliant course a few times a week, or dedicate Saturday mornings to learn something new. So maybe as part of that habit, you learn more about how cryptography actually works, or you brush up on your stats knowledge to better make sense of the data that's out there. So make sure to check out Brilliant today by going to brilliant.org slash hellomayuko, where the first 200 people will get 20% off the annual premium subscription. Thank you again to Brilliant for sponsoring, and thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye!